In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about ultrasound knobology that we use in aesthetic ultrasound. So knobology basically uh, refers to the various knobs and buttons and controls that we have um, to adjust both the B mode image and the Doppler image that we have with ultrasound. So it doesn't matter which uh, type of ultrasound machine you use, whether it be a, a traditional style like the two images here at the bottom where they've got all of the knobs and buttons um, labeled and right out in front of you, or whether you're using one of the more modern, smaller handheld ultrasound machines where all of the controls can be found usually on a touch screen or maybe on a button on the actual transducer itself. All ultrasound machines will essentially have the same main buttons and they are depth, gain, focus, frequency, dynamic range, and then you have buttons to adjust your various modes. So in color Doppler, um, again, you have a color Doppler gain, you have a PRF or a scale to adjust how, uh, to how quickly the blood is flowing, and you also have buttons to adjust the frequency. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about exactly what each button does, and in ultrasound, it's always a balancing act. So for example, if you increase your frequency, you'll get better resolution, but you'll lose some penetration. So um, knowing what each of these buttons does so that you can help optimize your image in different situations is really useful um, when you're ultrasound imaging. So let's take a quick look at this image here. Uh, this is an image that will be familiar to a lot of people. It's the temporal region in, um, in the head. At the very top of the screen here, uh, we can see that the image, this is, this is a well-optimized image, by the way. We have the gel at the top of the screen. You can see very clearly um, this epidermis layer. Then we've got the dermis here. We've got the, this first bright white line being the superficial temporal fascia. Then we've got the superficial fat pad, which is this structure in here. And this next bright white line is the deep temporal fascia underneath all of this structure here where all the fibers are well aligned. That's our temporalis muscle. And you can see the bone here, um, which is the temporal bone um, on the bottom there. And you can also see this really clear, well-defined um, zygoma bone up here. So let's take a look at some different options for optimizing this type of image. So the very first one and the first button which I always suggest people optimize is depth. So in the middle here we can see a fairly well optimized picture of um, this temporal region for depth. On the left hand side you can see that we've zoomed in, we don't have enough depth so we're actually missing the bottom part of the temporalis muscle. And then on the right hand side you can see that we're zoomed out too far and the problem with being zoomed out too far is that it makes it really difficult to see the detail, you can't see all of the information. So Depth is kind of like framing the picture and it's the very first place to start when you're optimizing the image. The second and the easiest um, or the next most easiest thing to optimize is your gain. So on the left hand side of the screen you can see what happens when the gain is too low. Um, in the middle we have the optimum amount of gain and on the right if you turn it up too high the image is going to appear really washed out. So when you're looking at these three different images, the main stuff that you can see is that when the gain is too low, you're going to lose detail, especially in these um, far field areas, and it becomes difficult to differentiate the different layers. When the gain is optimized, you can see clearly um, a difference between each of the layers, and you can see detail um, in every different layer. On the right hand side, just turning up the gain too much, it starts to blur the layers in together. Um, and it makes it difficult to differentiate those parts of the image. The next thing that we can optimize is the focus position. So some machines now will have an automatic focus and you won't need to focus this yourself, but essentially what the focus position is, um, is a little arrow or it could be several arrows. So some machines will allow you to have several focus positions, but essentially it is the point where the ultrasound machine narrows the ultrasound beam um, to its narrowest point and focuses the image there. So on the left hand side we can see that the focus arrow is too low, it's below the level of the bone here. And what that means is these layers like this um, deep temporal fascia layer here, it's not very clearly defined. You can see it, but you can't see it well. Um, and same goes here for the fatty structures, uh, that superficial fat pad. You can kind of see some of the connective tissue in it, but when you look to the image on the right, which has the focus position about midway, you can really clearly see um, all of the detail within that deep temporal fascia, and you can see all of the detail within this um, fat pad as well. So having the focus position in the right level um, can be quite important. 
The next thing to have a look at is your frequency. So the general principle is that the higher the frequency, the better the resolution, um, but the worse the penetration. So a lot of people in aesthetic imaging think that the best um, way to go is just to increase the resolution as much as possible. Um, in fact, you need to just match the resolution to the type of ultrasound machine that you're using and the tissue that you're scanning as well. So if you need to scan a little bit deeper, you might want to decrease the frequency. If you need to scan a little bit more superficial, you might increase the frequency. But on the left-hand side of the screen, what we've got here is, is a lower frequency. Um, you can see that the image generally appears brighter but there's not very much definition in it at all. In the, um, in the middle image here, we've actually got the highest frequency in this image here. So it is a high resolution image. However, we've actually, it looks a bit dark. We've actually lost a little bit of penetration. And so when you compare this higher resolution image or this high frequency rather image to the one on the right, which is set at just a slightly lower resolution, um, the one on the right, you can actually see the fibers a lot clearer in the muscle here. You can see the detail in this neurovascular bundle here. You can see the detail um, better in the fat pad as well. So you need to check for yourself what the best frequency is. The best frequency isn't always going to be the highest frequency, especially um, in superficial areas. Dynamic range is another um, button that you can optimize on the ultrasound image as well. So dynamic range is a lot like contrast. So if you really want to have structures stand out, you can lower your dynamic range. So a lower dynamic range, and this is an extreme example, is going to appear very um, contrast. And so you can see all of the different, um, you know, different fascial planes here, and you can see all of the different layers are very much, you know, there's a lot of contrast to them. On the other hand, if you turn the dynamic range right up, you can get more detail in the image, but it come, becomes really soft. So again, it's a bit of a balance in act, and the dynamic range is probably going to be somewhere between those two extremes. Next, if we take a look at color Doppler, Doppler optimization, um, I won't go into it in full detail in this video, but a few things that you can do to optimize your color. So we're in the same area here. The very first and, and simplest thing that you can do is when you turn on the color, um, you can put this box here to an appropriate size. So the bigger this color box is, the harder it's going to make the ultrasound machine work because it's processing a lot of data within that box. So if you're only looking for, say, a, a deep anterior temporal artery in this area, um, then you don't need the box to be this large. The next thing that you can do is to turn the gain right up, which is what is happening in this image here. And that'll give you a lot of speckly artifact, um, which is exactly what we can see here. And that's going to tell you. And then from that point, you start to decrease it slowly until you see all of those speckles disappear. And once they disappear, you should be able to pick up your artery in that area. So that's that's the first thing. Set the box correctly, adjust your gain. And then once you've adjusted the gain, um, the next most common thing that I would say you should do is adjust your PRF. So PRF stands for pulse repetition frequency. On some machines, they'll call it scale. Um, but essentially what you're trying to do is match the speed of the pulses from the ultrasound machine with the speed of the flow in the blood. So if you've got your PRF too high and the blood flow or the speed of the blood flow is too slow, like it is in this image, the pulses are too high to pick up the speed of the blood flow. So in other words, as each pulse comes down, the blood hasn't moved far enough along for the ultrasound to be able to detect it. Um, so if you're seeing an image like this, or you think you should be able to see some blood flow and you feel like your gain is optimized, then try decreasing the PRF. So if you have a decreased PRF and it's matching the flow of the blood, so I think on this side we've got a PRF of 0.9 kilohertz, on the right, we've got 5.8 kilohertz, exactly the same um, image, and that's the different result. On the other hand, if your PRF is too low and the blood flow is, is much faster than what that PRF is set to, you might see something that looks like turbulent flow, or you might get a lot of movement artifacts, so lots of little speckles um, around the actual artery as well.